Welcome to the U Poker Academy lesson on using Poker Stove. Uh, the goals of this lesson, we're going to learn how to use ranges to evaluate poker hands, we're going to decide whether to call or fold, and we're going to dispel the myth that our opponents always have it. Um, just a note, Poker Stove is an approved program at all online poker sites, it's not cheating, and you can get a copy from the link in the description. Uh, this is what Poker Stove looks like, and we're going to go through three hands, and I'm going to show you how I would use it to make decisions about poker hands. So, for the first hand, we're going to have Pocket Kings, and we don't know what our opponent had. So, before the flop, our opponent raises, we raise again with our Pocket Kings, and he calls. So, at this point, um, we know that our opponent's hand is good but not great because he didn't re-raise when we re-raise but he did call. So the flop comes ace, jack, five. And our opponent goes all, all in for about the size of the pot. So it's not a big over bet but he is representing the ace or uh, he's representing that he has a hand. So what we have to do is we have to decide with what probability did he hit that ace and what what probability are we ahead. So to do this you go to Poker Stove and you put in your hand. There's two ways you can do this. You can simply type King King or you can click in King King here on the cards menu. For our opponent's hand we're going to select a range of cards that he could have had by going to preflop and we're going to say because he raised uh, he raised first in and then he called our raise he's got a good hand probably in the top 20 percent he'd probably play any pocket pair like this he might play any of these hands in that manner but not a great hand so he probably doesn't have aces or kings he might have ace king it's uncertain at this point probably doesn't have queens either. So we're going to click OK and you'll see here uh, our opponent's perceived range based on the information we just gave the program. When you go over here to the board cards you select the Ace of Clubs, the Jack of Spades, and the Five of Hearts. Hit OK then click Evaluate and it'll tell us the percentage of the time that we are ahead on this flop. As you can see here we're about 60 percent to win so when our opponent goes all in we should call. That's all it is to use a poker stove. Let's uh, put this to the side and we'll go through another hand. In this hand, our opponent has uh, our opponent uh, has gone all in pre-flop and we had an 8-8 eight, eight pocket pair. Now we're going to assume that our opponent went all in pre-flop that he had 10 to 15 big blinds so he he has a good hand but we know he doesn't have to have a monster he doesn't have to have a hand better than ours because he's getting kinda of short stacked but he's also not so short stacked that he could be going all in with any two cards now we've got eight it's a middle pocket pair you know if he's got two over cards we're basically flipping against him if he's got an over pair we're way behind so we need to decide just how good our hand is against uh, his range so we're going to put an 8-8 for our hand and for his cards we're going to say he has uh, say the top 20 percent probably not any ace probably take out the lower aces probably add the lower pocket pairs um, maybe not 10-9 or jack-9 suited or the weaker kings So this looks like a range that you could see a bunch of people going all in with um, when they're on the button and they've got kind of a short stack. This would be a reasonable range. This would be about what I would go all in with. Uh, maybe not Queen-9. But we can go and hit OK. And then we can hit Evaluate to see what our equity is against his range. And here the numbers are coming up. We're 53% ahead. So it's a close call, but it's clearly a call. If we don't make this call, if we fold here we're gonna lose money and if we had sevens I imagine it would be closer here with 51 percent we should still call this uh, if we have sixes 
Here we're 49%. We should fold this. So using Poker Stove, we can tell exactly how good our hand needs to be to make a call. For the third example, I'm going to put these cards back and I'm going to pull out the King Queen of Clubs. So we have King Queen suited and we don't know what our opponent has. Uh, before the flop, we raise and he calls, and he calls in position, so we're going to be playing out of position this hand. Um, the flop is the ten of clubs, the two of clubs, and the three of hearts. So we have two over cards and a flush draw. Um, we lead out with a continuation bet as a standard in this spot. We've got a great hand, but then our opponent raises. Now we have a decision to make. Can we continue? So we pull out the trusty poker stove and we say we have king, queen of clubs on a board of ten of clubs, two of clubs, three of hearts. Then we have to decide what our opponent has. Now if our opponent's loose or aggressive or he could have called in position with a lot of different hands, um, we're not going to be able to use the preflop tab to narrow a hand range because it would be very very large like it's not going to do us any good to know that he could have any of these hands um, instead what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to the card section and we're going to say well given the fact that he's raised on this flop what hands could he have had um, well he could have a good 10 so something like ace 10 or he could have king 10 not sure if those both got selected. Clear. Okay, ace 10 and king 10. He could have some ace 10, king 10 suited. Um, would he have called with queen 10? That's not sure. Might have called with jack 10 suited. Um, he could have obviously be slow playing uh, a strong hand. He might have called with any pocket pair. Set mining. And a couple of those pocket pairs hit. But would he raise with middle pocket pairs that didn't hit things like fours, fives, sixes, sevens, eights, and nines? Probably not. He probably wouldn't want to raise with those hands. So he might have called with them, but based on the fact that he raised this flop, it's unlikely that he has them. Um, other hands he might have, he might have uh, any two clubs. Um, so is that going to be a major decision, uh, deciding factor in this hand? Probably not. The chance that he has two clubs and then plays them like this with a raise instead of a call. Those two probabilities put together not very likely, so I'm just going to exclude those. Um, and this is pretty much the, the range I would put them on for a call and then a raise. Might even discount something like aces. <coughs> um, so yeah, against these hands, you know, against the sets, we're going to win if we catch the flush. Against the tens, we're going to win if we catch the king or the queen even. So this is probably a pretty good range and we need to know does the fact that we have two over cards plus a flush draw mean we can call uh, this raise. So we're going to click OK and we're going to hit evaluate. Now we need to know exactly what percentage of the time we're going to win but we also need to know how much money we're going to make if we do hit our hand. Now if our opponent goes all in um, we're going to see two more cards, so we're actually going to have a, a, a good opportunity to to catch all of our cards. And if he was to go all in, it would be 45% to catch our cards. So given the fact that there's money in the pot, we'd probably want to call here. We've got good draws against his range. You know, he could have a set, but he could just have a 10, and he might be full of crap. Um, however, if our opponent did not go all in, we know that we're actually only going to get to see one card. Given that, our, uh, the percent that we're going to actually hit our hand is significantly lower, about 20% lower. Um, so if he didn't go all in, we expect him to bet on the next streak. We're actually going to be about 25% equity in this hand. Um, is that good enough to play on? It's very unlikely. We'd have to make a lot of money off of this opponent when we hit our hand. And since our hand is a flush draw, he's going to know that we have a flush. So since our hand's not very disguised and we're kind of putting all our cards on the table, we're not going to be able to call this bet unless he goes all in and we get to realize this full 45% equity. Now obviously if there's no money in the pot um, and he goes all in, 
45% uh, is not enough to call. There'd have to be a significant number of chips in the pot as overlay. So poker stove can get kind of complicated at times when you're dealing with situations like this, but once you start to understand how pot odds and overlay start to impact your decisions, um, you can take this out and you can use these equity numbers here to actually calculate how much money needs to be in the pot and so on to see if you did actually make a good decision off the table. Um, but poker stuff is an extremely powerful tool uh, and as you can see you don't always have to assume that your opponent has you beat. You can you still might be making a good call like on the first hand when the ace was out and we had the kings. It's probably still a good call even though he could have the ace because your opponent doesn't always have it. You know he has a range of hands and that range of hands is it, it includes some hands that you beat. It also includes some hands that beat you. So you use poker stove to tell exactly how many hands you beat and how many hands you don't beat. Um, hope you've enjoyed the lesson and if you would do me a favor and either like or share this video you know it'll help me get some more viewers, it'll let me know that people are watching this. Um, I'd really appreciate that and if you enjoyed it you can also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, you know videos every couple of days. Thank you very much. Good luck.